lesson number seven so we are talking about annotations and annotations are the heart and mind of playwright like it tells you like which test you should be running which test you should be skipping and for example if you have multiple tests categorized into different categories for example one set of tests should be running for a region like canada another test should be running for a region like uk that's that's a category so how would you run uh, uk test how would you run canada tests you you will learn that in this video how should you mark a test as failing how can you double or triple the timeout for a test without making a lot of changes to test configuration so it will help you with debugging investigation flakiness everything you are looking forward to so make sure you watch this video multiple times if you don't understand once because this is a really important video annotations are a way for us to debug failures look at flaky tests and run tests by particular tags so these are very helpful for example if you have got multiple tests running in pipeline and they are for for example one test is for a region that you want to run for for example canada region another test is for uk region and in the pipeline you want to differentiate between the uk region and canada region you could potentially use the uh, the tags feature here if i scroll down in my documentation in here we can add at the rate fast or at the rate canada at the rate dpd any any of the tags that we want in here and then we can run the test using the dash dash grab at the rate tag name so we will look into that in a bit but right now we have got these two tests from our previous lesson i want to run only the first test so let's see how we can do that so it says if you add the dot only annotation in front of it it will run only that particular test so i'm gonna add dot only and i'm gonna save my file so you can see that now it shows across and i'll open a new terminal now by default it runs the test on three workers so i'm gonna make sure that i'm just running it on one one browser so i can specify project webkit so let, let's just copy the whole line so npx playwright test webkit and let's do headed mode so you can see running one test using one worker is what it did for us so one test which test did it run it was this one so if i remove the dot only now and i'm i run the same command again it says now running two tests using two workers so this time it was running two tests so if you want to run one test at a time you can specify that so headed why did that not work so i'm gonna just look into that now because i wanted to see the test running i like to see it running in front of me so i'm gonna add that back again and see it didn't open the window for me so i'm gonna try another project and see if it or let, let me get rid of the project and see if this does the trick so now it is opening the browser in the headed mode it is opening it on all um, i guess workers it's running it on on work all workers so now i'll try to just specify i just want to run it on firefox so it is running the two test it is working in the headed mode and then it completed the test so again the main idea over here is the annotation so dot only will specifically run one test and that works fine so i'm gonna try other annotations very quickly to see what how they work so on the left hand side you can see uh, in the playwright test there's a topic called annotations so now if we try to use the dot fail marks the test as failing ensures it does indeed fail so we know that this test passes so i'm gonna do dot test dot fail and it says the usage is you add the word test dot fail inside the test so i'm going to get rid of dot only inside the test is this bit basically so i'm going to do test.fail and let's see if we can run this test 
I'm going to keep dot dot only because I just I'm focusing on this test only. So let's see what happens. So it ran the test and it says failed and open the report saying fail expected to fail but passed. So it was expected to fail, but the test passed. So that, that, that is what happens when you try the fail. And if we go back to the documentation and look at the fail again, so it says you can specify a condition inside. Conditions mark as test S should fail with an optional description. So it can take two arguments, condition and description. So here there is an example. So you could potentially do test dot fail and wrap all the test in it. Uh, and then you have the browser name. So if it's a browser name web kit, the test should fail. So that was a condition here. So you could basically get the browser name as a fixture and then compare that fixture with the web kit and then you can make it fail. So should we try that? Uh, I'm going to copy this function, which is web kit fail. round brackets ending okay so this 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 is a whole round bracket so i'm just going to copy the whole line because that's a complete line so let's just do this so right now i'm running the test on project firefox so it should pass because the condition is that the test should fail if it is webkit i I haven't got the browser name as a fixture, so I need to uh, pull that in to the test with our page object models from the previous video. Now it says test or fail with a function can only be called inside describe block. So you cannot call it here. You need to have a describe block wrapping it. So here they had these tests outside. So uh, the test or fail was outside these two. So I'm going to pull this here. And let's see what happens. Okay, so as you can see the test passed. So the only test that was running, which was this test, this test it passed because the condition was not met now i'm gonna make sure the condition is met so i'm gonna do project webkit as you can see expected to fail but passed and this test failed so that that's, that's a really hand, handy trick uh, to investigate if you want to run the test on a particular browser or you can you want to specify this as a failure like hard fail so you could do do that as well. So that's a handy uh, annotation. Uh, so we have done only we could potentially skip a test. So if there are like thousands of tests in a file and you want to skip uh, one because that is failing in the pipeline and you want to uh, merge the PR into the pipeline and fix this later because the issue is not with the code or, or there is a forward fix coming up with the code. You need to merge that in and then enable the test in another PR. You would use this kind of method. So I'm going to do a skip and I'll run all the tests again. So it should run one test. Let's see. So it, it over here, it ran two tests and it skipped one of them. So you can see that I added skip. So it shows me in the terminal, like how many is skipped. Fix me, marks the test as failing. Uh, playwright will not run this test as opposed to the fail annotation. Use fix me when you're okay. So let's try fix me so that we can understand the difference between a skip and fix me so i ran the test and it's just different words so it's like a sugar on top of skip uh, test so I, I don't see any difference marks the test as slow and triples the test timer so sometimes you want to uh, make show that some of the tests you are, are working with you are aware of that they are slow and 
you want to increase the timeout without changing all the configurations and this does it and it, it also adds a red flag to your test code like hey I, I need to do something about this so what can we do so we can do a proper fix so i would not recommend using slow rather than just fix the thing why is it slow investigate and fix it so we have covered the focus test skip a test conditionally skip a test so we can try this so like i was saying uh, sometimes you want to run the test in a particular region or a particular environment you can add those conditions here for example if it's firefox and there is an issue particular to firefox you can potentially skip it so i'm gonna run this test on a project firefox and see what happens so if i scroll up a little it skipped one test but if i we run the test and i specify project webkit it ran let's see let me slowly open yeah so it says running two tests and two paths so it ran all the, all of the tests here grouping a test so you could use test or describe and that, that could be like describing what all this all these tests are i would recommend using this because this is very helpful like when when you're work, working with the test in the real world describes for example this is testing like I mean, the, the, the scope of these tests are not correct. So you cannot describe it as like page object model. But that is what I, I would do. Like say, we are testing page object model and this will directly highlight like this thing does not belong here and we should move that into a separate file. So basically it's a single responsibility principle. So I've put a describe block in here. I'm going to run the test again. And nothing happens it's just for better documentation uh it, it should highlight in reports now like if i look at the report it should be visible that we are running this describe block here uh address already in use so is this already in use no so it, it has kill, killed the service uh only reports are only shown when the test is continuously failing so can try failing the test and see <laughs> If that works and you know how easy it is to fail the test so i can do that dot fail i think and see if i can run the test again and it it would show me the reports so now test is failing it it showed me the reports and let's look for the describe block so yeah so it says page object model on the top let me try changing that to and describe block and then we run the whole thing again to see if that changes so it says project web if i click on here it says page object model i'm describe block so you, you have some extra information to debug the test with tagging test yes this is important so i'm going to use my regions example uh, let's get rid of these two that skips test fail so I'm going to tag this test with at the rate Canada. So let's try to run this test for Canada region. So unpick play right grab. And I want to run only the Canada test. Uh, let me just put the project here back because I don't want to run uh, multiple workers here. So project okay, because I, I made a font really huge for this video it's, it's even for me it's, it's hard to look at how I look, like read the text over here so i'm gonna go back to the documentation and then look at the project so it's, it's just space so sometimes it's, it's equal to sometimes it's space so i was just trying to find out the right argument so let's see how many tests it ran so when i did canada project webkit it ran only one test if i put this canada tag in here as well what happens it ran two tests so if i had more tags like dpd and canada i wanted to run like only the dpd test one test ran so yep you can have multiple tags if that was your question you can have single test tag 
and you can run the test by tags. Um, you can run it by a specific file name. Uh, th that's how you do it. Uh, that's very clear, so I'm not going to show that right now. Uh, and you can run multiple directories like this to run a specific, specific title. So you could look at the title of the test and specify that and run only uh, that particular test. And we have gone to the UI debugging. So that covers annotation. So it's a sweet, simple and short topic. I thought I would just make a quick video and show you how it actually works. I mean, documentation has text in it, but when you see it running, then you have a bit more idea of like how it works. So hope you enjoyed that one. I hope this video has answered most of your questions about what are test annotations. If your background was with Jest or any other JavaScript background, you must have noticed that this is very, very similar things that you have been working with, but with additional extra spice on top. So hope you enjoyed that. After this, there's a video about test configuration and that will give you um, an upper hand on how you can set up your framework. So this will give you all the things that you need to work with Playwright and test automation using Playwright. So. See you in the next video, Master.